Now that we've learned about herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 infections in adults, how does the infection impact pregnancy? Are there any special considerations throughout pregnancy? And does infection affect how the baby is delivered? Let's find out. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Dersna. Welcome back to my channel, where we discuss topics related to obstetrics, gynecology, and sexual health. If you find value in these videos, I encourage you to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment. In the previous herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 videos, we learned about the infections from the point of view of transmission from one sexual partner to another. In this video, we'll learn about the infection as it relates to pregnancy and the consequences of transmission to the baby. Stick around to the end to learn about two additional ways the baby can be infected. An infection by herpes simplex virus, or HSV, and an outbreak of lesions can occur in three ways. A primary infection is the very first time you've ever become infected and have an outbreak by either HSV-1 or HSV-2. A non-primary first episode is an outbreak by HSV-1 when you have previously been infected by HSV-2 or vice versa. So you were already infected with one type and now you've become infected with the other type leading to an outbreak. A recurrent infection is an outbreak of the same type of HSV with which you were already infected. Approximately three out of four people previously infected will have at least one recurrent outbreak during pregnancy. Of these three options, a primary infection at the time of delivery carries the highest risk of transmission to the baby. When a newborn is infected, it's called neonatal herpes, and the most common time of infection is during delivery. The infection can be limited to their skin, eyes, or mouth, it can spread to their nervous system, or it can spread throughout their body. One out of three babies will die if the infection spreads throughout their body, and even in survivors, there are long-term neurologic consequences. There are two medications that are safe to use during pregnancy to treat and prevent outbreaks, acyclovir and valacyclovir. If you have an outbreak during pregnancy, contact your OBGYN provider for a prescription. Once you reach 36 weeks of gestation, it's recommended to start daily suppressive therapy, which is taking acyclovir or valacyclovir daily until delivery to prevent outbreaks, because an outbreak can affect how the baby is delivered, which we'll learn now. If you have an active lesion on the vulva or in the vagina at the time of labor or induction of labor, then it's recommended to have a C-section. Even having symptoms like burning or pain that occur before a lesion erupts is a reason to have a C-section, because it may mean that the virus is present and shedding, which increases the risk of transmission. Having a C-section does not eliminate the risk of transmission, but it greatly reduces it. If you have an active lesion on your body, other than on the vulva or in the vagina, even if it's close by, such as on the inner thigh, then you can still have a vaginal delivery. It just needs to be covered by a bandage. Once the baby is born, it's still possible for them to become infected. If you have an active lesion on your breast, the infection can be transmitted while the baby breastfeeds. The other way is from family members who are infected with HSV, especially when they have active lesions. Anyone with active lesions should avoid handling the baby, and special care should be taken by everyone to thoroughly wash their hands with soap and water. Thanks for watching. Now hit that subscribe button and like the video. Then check out this other video to keep learning.